How are we doing, Blues fans? <sighs> happy Sunday. What a happy Sunday it is as well. He's finally gone. Steve Cottrell has finally been sacked from the Blues. And about time, man. About time. I know he had that little spell in January. But all in all, what a terrible, terrible tenure he's had. He, he had to go. He had to go. We've lost five in a row now in the league. Probably six in all competitions. Even if you disregard the results, the way he's acting in the media has been ridiculous. It's childish. It's arrogant. It's just, he's not a very nice person. So we're going to look at, you know... Who's coming up? Who could potentially be our new manager? We're also going to be looking at Twitter and seeing how Twitter's reacted to it as well. Because I know there's a lot of people, even people that aren't exactly Birmingham fans, you know, reporters uh, that had discussed their thoughts on Steve Cottrell as well. So I thought I'd look into that and just see where it all went wrong, really. Where did it all go wrong? For the man that, at the end of last season, seemed like a bit of a hero alongside Harry Redknapp, it's, it's strange to see that now both Harry Redknapp and Steve Cottrell have been sacked from Blues after both being full-time managers. But let's celebrate. It's fo He's finally gone. He's finally gone. Thank God, that's all I can say. Because I, I was worried it was going to be another Zola situation where there's going to be little time at the end of the season, three games left or whatever, and that's it. But, you know, we're almost there. We're, we've got 11 games left. You know, there is still a big chance we're going to go down. Um, but a change has been made now, and it looks like Gary Monk is coming in to replace him. I feel I feel he can do a job. I feel he can do a job, definitely. But first of all, let's talk about Steve Cottrell. Not only is Steve Cottrell gone, but six of his backroom staff has left as well, including one name, Jeff Vertier. That is official that he has left the club now, and he's one of the one of the people that were in charge of the transfers, and that's where it all started to go wrong for Blues this season. We didn't do right in the transfer window, and it showed on the pitch. Another one of them names alongside Vatier is Darren Dean, and I don't think there's going to be any official uh, confirmation of his departure, because he wasn't, um, according to Al Majir, he wasn't actually working for Birmingham PLC, he was contracted to the owners, uh, the owners company. It is understood that he has left as well. So now, not only are they looking for a new manager, they might be looking for new advisors, um, new directors of football maybe, this is where the right decision has to be made. A lot of thought has to be gone into this. And we need someone that puts Birmingham City first and someone who knows their arse from their elbow, basically. I've got a clip, right? You need to see this clip. It's one of Steve Cottrell's quotes after the Forest game. And this isn't the only one. This is one of his thoughts after a match. Now, if you're not a Birmingham City fan and you're just here, I mean, most of you probably are, but what do you think of this? We don't make too mistakes. And we've got a clean sheet. And we get a corner like that. You all of a sudden go away, you've won one nil, three points. What sort of excuse is this? Mistakes happen. You've made mistakes. If you don't make two mistakes, what does that mean? I'm, I'm pretty sure that you could say something like that for every single defeat. It, pretty much every goal is avoidable, especially in this division. You know, you're not, you're not in a cup competition. You're playing a, a team that's on your level. Most goals are avoidable. Goals come through mistakes. How do mistakes happen? Yeah, we're making more mistakes currently. Why is that? Because we are low in confidence. Why are they low in confidence, I wonder? The way I see you, Cottrell, the way I see you conduct yourself in interviews, no wonder the players have zero confidence. I feel sorry for the players a little bit. Obviously, they have to take some responsibility. But imagine having to play for that. Because if that's how he is, when the media has their full attention on him, imagine what it's like behind closed doors. That's that's what I have to say. Imagine, imagine having to put up with that. I can put up with it. I'm a Blues fan, right? I'll be playing for Blues. I would be, I would be fuming. I really, uh, genuinely. And they can't say anything, can they? They can't say, they can't go out and say stuff about their manager. They'll be dropped. They'll be, they'll be hounded. But genuinely, he's the worst manager I've seen in my, in my time. You know, I've only been around 20 odd years, but I'm pretty sure older people would agree with me. Would do you? If you're if you're older, you know, if you've been around, if you've been around in the 80s, is this the worst you've seen from a manager? What? Who is this? I swear to God, mate, he's such an idiot. He's such an idiot, and he can't take any blame. And I refuse to feel sorry for him. I, re I refuse. I know the club have somewhat gone, gone beyond his back, allegedly, as people are saying. Um, you know, they've gone uh, looking for managers, interviewing managers, allegedly, while he's still at the club. I have no sympathy for you, Steve Cottrell. Zero sympathy. The way you conduct yourself in interviews is ridiculous. You're meant to be a professional. Football manager, 
It's just absolutely ludicrous. You've got journalists who are doing their job, asking you questions, yeah? And just, in your head, they're implying things. They're implying that, oh, they're trying to make me look stupid. No, you are stupid. That's the whole point. Cottrell had a go at a journalist for asking a question, are you, are you worried for your job? Do you feel safe? He's so... It's like watching the leader of North Korea have an interview. They want their questions like... Oh no, we need to, no, we can't say that. We'll ask me it like this. Ask me it like this. And if you look on Twitter as well, you can tell. I feel sorry for the journalists. I have no sympathy for Steve Cottrell. A manager doesn't, ha for me, right, to respect a manager, they don't have to ha be a tactical mastermind. They just have to want to do well for the club, not be self obsessed. Look after the players, whatever you have at your disposal, and get them playing football. Even if it's back to basics football, look at Lee Clark, right? When we had Lee Clark, we thought, Gee, you know what? Who, who is this guy? He's ridiculous. But that man showed passion. He didn't have, he didn't have an amazing squad at his disposal, and he kept us up. But this guy is the most arrogant person I've ever seen, and I've not seen anyone so desperate to deflect blame. It doesn't make you a weak person to accept responsibility for mistakes you might have made. Everyone makes mistakes. You need to know that. You're a football manager. Everyone makes mistakes. But the main thing is holding your hand up and saying, I'm sorry. Or, not, you know, even not I'm sorry. Just, I accept that I made a mistake here. You know, um, we could have done this differently. Or they deserve to win. Not if we didn't, oh, you know, if, 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 buts and maybes. That's all it is. If, buts and maybes. All the time. You're never going to improve if you don't notice and accept and build on your weaknesses. And if you just say, we played well every single time. You know, we thought with, we, we thought with Zola when he said, we were unlucky, we were unlucky, we were unlucky. We were sick of that. This is even worse. Zola was trying to change it. He had a sort of idea. He had a sort of vision, which was totally not going to happen at Birmingham City, because that's not what we are. We're not a flair, passing it round kind of team. We're just a basic football team. We do. We're a hard-working team. <laughs> but but Steve Cottrell had no idea. He's like, he's not someone who's just picked up football manager for the first time, and they're just having to play around on it. And Jeez, like... He's finally been sacked anyway. Let's have a look at some more tweets directed at him or about Steve Cottrell. So, Jack Vittles is a reporter for the Bristol Post. He said, Once had Steve Cottrell ring me up two days after a match to complain about my intro in a 150-word piece on a Bristol City win I wrote as a student. He took offence to my use of the phrase under pressure boss Steve Cottrell. Two months later, he was sacked. The fact that he has to hound people that show any sign of criticism towards him shows how insecure he is as a person, genuinely. Steve Cottrell, you should have walked. I, I didn't expect you to walk because we were stupid enough to give you a two and a half year deal, which means obviously you're going to have a payout. And I have a feeling that you wanted to leave. You were just making it as difficult as possible so that you'd get sacked and you'd get your money. What? This is the only job where if you're terrible at your job, you get kicked out with... All of your salary paid for. You just you don't have to do your job anymore. You get your payout. It's ridiculous. You don't deserve that money because you haven't put anything into Birmingham City Football Club. You've just taken us further and further down. If you would like to give anything back to the Birmingham community for what you've what you've done to the club, get any part of your payout, which I, I'm guessing is massive, and just put some money towards the Birmingham homeless at this time. When it's, you know, when it's cold, put some money towards that and all is forgiven. We'll move on. That's all I'm going to say. But you had to, you had to wait for the payout purely because you're not going to get another job like this. You are a coach. You are not a football manager. And unless you get some help, learn how to take criticism, yeah? Then you're not going to be a successful football manager. You are your own limitation, Steve Cottrell. Not only is it your tactics or anything of the sort, your man management the way you deal with the press, you have to learn to take criticism and grow from it. We all do. The most successful people are open to their own flaws and you have to be. You, that's how you grow. That's how you be successful. You can't lie to yourself and kid to yourself that you're better than you are because you're not. If you, if you, if you can learn from this and build on it, then maybe you'll be a successful League One manager. Maybe you'll go back to the championship. I don't know, but you've got a lot of growing to do. 
You really do. You need to work alongside a good manager. Learn from them. How do they man manage? Put your ego to one side. Because it's 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 no use to you. It's no use to you. Some of the best managers might have a bit of an ego with them, but they have tactics to back it up. They are as good as what they're saying. But but when it's just excuse after excuse after excuse, just doesn't just doesn't cut it for me. It's just not it's just not good enough. He said the players are scared to death to play at home. No, you were scared to death because all the anger was directed at you. You know, there, there there might have been some directed towards players in Doy, for example, um, being cheered off, Hutter being booed on. It's a, it's a poor state of affairs, really, because I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. When a player is playing in the ninety minutes, hasn't kicked a ball, they shouldn't be booed. I, that's just that's just my opinion. Forest away yesterday was probably the flattest atmosphere I've seen this season uh, in the away game, but we still sold out. We had two thousand there. I think everyone had the same feeling. They all knew, you know, the reports were going around that Steve Cottrell was going to be sacked, win, lose or draw. And we all sort of knew he was getting sacked and we all pretty much conceded defeat before the game as well. So it was a strange atmosphere. We lost, but we expected to lose and you never want to be in a situation like that. Let's have a look at some more tweets anyway. So Phil Tro, who is the breakfast presenter at BBC Radio in Manchester, he once asked, right, this, I'll read the tweet out. Poor old Steve Cottrell once asked him, was he delighted to get a new contract? And he blew a gasket and demanded I ask the question again as it was inferring he didn't deserve one. So I said, reaction to your new contract? To which he replied, delighted. Just calm down, mate, calm down. There's a lot more I could go into here about Steve Cottrell. But yeah, you know, it's it's very tough. It's very tough. And just because we've sacked Steve Cottrell does not mean our season is saved. Does not mean we're going to stay up. We've still got a big task on our hands. So if it is Gary Monk. I'm happy with that. But we'll do another video on that when it's officially announced. Um, I would be happy with it though because I think he's got he's got some experience. Not a vast amount of experience, but he's, he's, he's worked in the division before. He's been successful in the Premier League. He is not tactically inept. He seems pretty well composed. He speaks well, seems like a decent man manager, and that's all we can ask for, really. Like, no one better than that is going to come to the club, in my opinion. And I would rather have Gary Monk than someone who's unproven. Although, in the long run, I would like a manager that um, you, you can take more of a gamble on that is sort of coming up, like a Gary Rowett. But in the current situation, when we've got 11 games to go, we need someone who can sort of hit the ground running. And hopefully Gary Monk can do that. Be interesting to see the situation in the summer as well. A very different one to last summer. I think it's going to be um, a few more players sold, not much brought in. But yeah, we have to we have to check financial fair play. Hopefully, we can sign a couple of players, but who knows? Enough of me talking to the camera anyway. I want to hear your opinions, so let me know in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going on Cottrell. Your thoughts on him? Was he treated unfairly? Am I being too harsh on him in this video? Let me know in the comments down below and we'll have a discussion. Obviously, we're all not going to agree on the same things, but it's good to it's good to get other people's opinions, isn't it? So I will be doing an Instagram live as well when any new announcements are made, such as a manager um, like Gary Monk being given the job, something like that. So if you do want to join that, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Um, all my social media links are in the description and they're at the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you next time and keep right on. Pretty ass, brilliant ass, nigga with a sick ass bump and a slick ass flow. Uh huh. That's a bitch around me, nigga ain't a plan when I'm coming for the kitty, got my full goddamn. Do it for my niggas in the coast right there. Do it for my niggas in the